Recently I made a video about changing your eye color with eye drops and you loved it. Many have asked if I'll do a video on the surgical options for changing eye color as well. So today I'm delivering on my promise to check it out. Stay tuned with what I found and whether or not I myself would ever get this surgery. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. You've made it to Eye School with me, Dr. D. Welcome. If you're new here, this channel is all about eye education and we have a great community of pupils who love to learn about the eye. While you're at it, join me over on Instagram. I've created an Eye School with Dr. D account over there. And if you follow, you'll see infographics, behind the scenes, and more. So everybody loves blue eyes, it seems. Studies show that people rate blue eyes as one of the top five characteristics when assessing beauty. And so what are you supposed to do if you've got brown eyes? Well, let me first say that I think all eyes are beautiful and I fully support just loving the skin and the eyes you're in. But if you're looking for a way to change eye color, there's basically four options out there that you'll run across. So we've got cosmetic contact lenses. I've made a video about that. Color changing eye drops, like the ones I reviewed here recently. And then today we're talking about surgeries and this Saturday we'll be talking about laser procedures. So surgery is a more radical intervention to change eye color than the aforementioned drops or contact lenses. The American Academy of Ophthalmology article referenced in the comments down below acknowledges that there's only a few clinics in the U.S. performing iris reconstruction using prosthetic devices. I've also found a lot of clinics in Central America and one in Istanbul that are advertising the procedure. This video shows a patient from Istanbul, 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 having the procedure done. Hi guys, I'm in a World Eye Laser Clinic with a Dr. Thomas. It's my first day here and I'm so excited because I'm going to change my eye color. So we'll see what's going to happen. It's my second time here. As you can see, that piece what we made here got lighter. Uh, you can see it clearly. So we will keep continue. So half of eyes got complete. I have uh, the best green color. Thank you for treating me here in Istanbul. I think World Eye Clinic is the best one. Hello, I'm back home. It's my third month. My eyes got totally green color as I wished. Uh, so World Eye Clinic is the best one. Dr. Thomas is the best doctor on the world. Thank you so much, guys. You are the best, uh, especially Dr. Thomas. Thank you so much. In 2018, the FDA approved the first artificial iris for use in the U.S. It's my understanding that these devices are still mainly used for patients with compassionate use reasons like aniridia. Aniridia is a condition where a person has no iris and you can only imagine what that's like. If you don't have an iris to block light, a person's going to have major light sensitivity, vision issues, and even be at greater risk from UV exposure. The FDA approval was actually for patients with aniridia or other damage to the iris. And I've got a picture of somebody with aniridia here. And then I have another picture of a patient pre and post surgery, which I can show you. So the Custom Flex artificial iris is made of a thin foldable medical grade silicone and it's custom sized and colored for each individual patient. A surgeon is going to make a small incision, insert the device under that incision, unfold it, and smooth out the edges using their surgical instruments. The prosthetic iris is held in place by the anatomical structures of the eye, or if needed, by sutures. The safety and effectivity of the Custom Flex artificial iris was demonstrated primarily in a non-randomized clinical trial of 389 adults and pediatric patients with aniridia or other iris defects. The study measured patients self-reported decrease in severe sensitivity to light and glare post-procedure, health-related quality of life, and then their satisfaction with the cosmetic improvement or appearance of their prosthesis. And patients were, of course, really happy with the results. I mean, they went from having no iris, more than 70% said, wow, this is way better. Less light sensitivity, less glare, and it's really nice to have an iris too, just cosmetically speaking. So this study also found low rates of adverse events associated with the device or the surgical procedure. 
But then the question becomes, what about doing iris implants then for someone without an ocular condition? And unfortunately, many brown-eyed seekers of blue or green eyes have found themselves with serious, potentially sight-robbing ocular problems after these implants have been put in. The new color iris implant was developed by Khan Medical Devices in Panama City, Panama, where the surgery was performed. Although this company is now reportedly out of business, ophthalmologists and optometrists may still see patients who are suffering vision-threatening sequela or side effects related to that device and having that implanted. Um, unlike the devices discussed in, you know, in um, Aniridia, these are implanted in front of a normal iris, and I think that's the big differentiator. When you're implanting these devices, when there's no iris or a very damaged iris, that is a different situation than doing it purely for cosmetic reasons in front of a normal, healthy, functioning iris. And in this case, glaucoma was the most common complication associated with these implants. Out of 128 cases of cosmetic implants between 2008 and 2016, 59, so basically almost half, develop secondary glaucoma as a result of the procedure. Elevations of the pressure in the eyes were recorded as high as 68. 44 of the 128 eyes um, suffered severe endothelial cell loss. So that's, we're talking about the cornea, the back layer of the cornea lost endothelial cells. And that's not good because that's the pump function of your cornea that regulates your corneal fluid. And so without endothelial cells, you can get a lot of corneal decompensation, corneal swelling, impaired vision, glare, all of these things. So the reason these occur when you have a normal functioning iris is probably due to one of three reasons or all three of these. So there can be a compression of what's called the trabecular meshwork, which is the eye's drainage system, and that can cause chronic inflammation. There can also be contact between the implant, the implant's flaps, and then the peripheral endothelial cells. So as your cornea comes into your iris, that implant is sitting there, and if you have um, shearing or pressure on those peripheral endothelium, the backside of the cornea, even though it's out here, that can cause cell death. And then even direct contact with the iris below it, leading to atrophy and then pigment dispersion. And I've got some pictures here. This is pigment dispersion syndrome, which is, is something that happens without having implants. But we know in pigment dispersion syndrome, people lose pigment in their iris, and that impacts their eye's ability to regulate pressure. And there is something called pigmentary glaucoma that happens as a result of pigment dispersion. So in these cases of these 50-some patients out of 128 that had problems, they had to have the devices removed. Well, that introduced more complications, including hyphema, which is blood in the anterior chamber of the eye, suprachoroidal hemorrhage, and iris defects as well, which can cause a lasting effect. Ultimately, having an iris implant put in for aniridia makes sense. We always have to think about risk benefit, right? So in the case that you have no iris and you're extremely symptomatic and you're having problems, it makes sense to do an iris implant. And I think that's really where the FDA indication is at this point. And that's the extent of who I would really recommend having an iris implant. When you get into cosmetic reasons for an iris implant, to me, the risks greatly outweigh the benefits. It is not worth it to have um, pigmentary glaucoma. Eye, eye pressure of 68 does not feel good. Hyphema is not a good situation as well. So if you want my answer after all of that, don't get an iris implant in another country to change your eye color. It's not worth it. Your eyes are pretty just like they are, I promise you. I hope that was interesting for you guys and answered your questions about iris implants. I'll make sure to leave my research links down below so you can see the studies that I read in preparing for this video. If you have gotten iris implants, I'd love to hear your experience down below. Leave that in the comments. That is going to be it for today's iSchool lesson. I will see you next time. Class is dismissed.